Next, bonus and productivity standards. These include bonuses that are provided by the employer. When it's a discretionary, meaning the employer does not have, uh, the employee, sorry, the employee does not have a right to demand it, or when is it a right, meaning in this case now, the employer may demand for the payment of a particular bonus. Remember that as a general rule, bonus is a, an act of generosity or gratitude on the part of the uh, employer showing his or her uh, thankfulness to the employee. Since it is an act of generosity, it cannot be demanded by the employee from the employer. However, if the employment contract or company, company policy provides for the bonus, meaning uh, there, there it is required or it is uh, granted to the employee after completion of certain conditions, for example, there would be a uh, sales target if the target is met and then the employee is the one uh, responsible for meeting the target or contributes to meeting the target, then the employee will be entitled to whatever bonus that may have been stipulated with respect to hitting that particular sales target. So it depends on how the bonus is framed, worded, or uh, designed by the employer or as how it is reflected in the employment contract uh, company policies, CBAs, and the like. With respect to performance, productivity standards, performance standards in relation to employee evaluation, it is the employer who gets to decide what will be the criteria, the standards that will be used in evaluating the performance of the employee. Having said that, and despite having said that, of course, as a matter of best practice, it would be uh, best if the employer uh, consult or ask the opinion of the employee if it would be fair for the employee to be assessed this and that. Because in some cases, a lot of companies use a very standardized form of evaluation, wherein sometimes it might not apply or work to a, a particular position or, the, or uh, specifically to a particular employee. For instance, many companies have uh, teamwork as one of the criteria. What if that particular employee does not really uh, form part of a team because the nature of his or her work does not require him to be under a particular team? Okay, there are cases like that. So it, it's not applicable to that particular employee. So it is best again to consult, check with that particular employee uh, what would be fair in terms of his or her, uh, in terms of evaluating his or her performance. Notwithstanding, remember that even if the employer consults with that particular employee, at the end of the day, it will still be the employer who will decide or who has the discretion or who has the prerogative to determine what will be the final uh, standards or criteria for the evaluation. So this, for this particular prerogative, I can remember the two limitations, one, good faith, number two, labor laws, as mentioned earlier, in the employment contracts, if it is already provided on what will be the standards or criteria, then that will be followed. If there would be any changes to the standards or criteria for evaluation later on, it will require the mutual consent of both the employer and the employee. So again, similar to company policies also, the employer is bound to follow what is in the current company policies with respect to how the employee will be evaluated and then the procedures or the processes. In most companies, there is a uh, one or two or sometimes three evaluations in a year. And then if the employee is not performing well, usually uh, there is a performance uh, improvement plan, a PIP, that is being made to apply to a particular employee. This is a form of company policies or it is a discretion on the part of the employer. There is no labor law no regulation requiring the uh, PIP. Um, so if the employer uh, wants to uh, practice PIP, then it's good. It's actually a best practice. But do remember that if you do design that particular procedure for 
improving the work performance of the employee, remember that you are bound to comply uh, with those uh, uh, processes and rules because there have been labor law cases wherein there is a PIP plan. However, the employer did not use it and instead just simply dismissed the employee based on poor performance. In those cases, the Supreme Court said that the employer is liable because under its own, under its very own company policies, there is supposed to be a PIP that will be uh, adopted or implemented and applied to the employee to give the employee a second chance. However, the employer simply railroaded or made a shortcut and did not anymore apply it, thus violating the very company policies uh, that the employer has. So that is the consequences. Um, again, jurisprudential rules and bonus and productivity standards, you'll read that more in the reading materials. Uh, the only thing that I want you to remember is that by default, uh, a bonus is an act of generosity. So it cannot be demanded by the employee. However, if it is worded in such a way that the employee is entitled thereto, subject to meeting certain conditions, then it becomes a right on the part of the employee who may demand it from the employer later on. 